been able to understand how grace operates. They have not been able to acknowledge your grace, oh God. What a privilege that we can start today and say, we know it is all by your grace that we are alive. It is all by your grace that we are sharing the word of God. It is all by the grace of God that we are here to dine from you. Heavenly Father, I call you Elohim, the most, the almighty God, almighty. And today, as we share in your word, thank you for the supernatural that will take place in our spirits, in our lives, and in the lives of these dear followers, wherever they are. Thank you for the power, your power, Lord, that will take place in the lives of many. There will be supernatural turnaround of events in our lives because your word is medicine. Your word is hope. Your word is provision. Your word is joy. Your word is grace. Your word is everything. Be thou glorified. Holy Spirit of the living God, have your way. Have your way. Have your way today. Have your way, Holy Spirit, as we thank you, as we honor you for bringing us back to church, for being in church today, a Tuesday. Things we used to do years back. And from the time the pandemic COVID-19 came, we stopped coming for Tuesday fellowship. And together with my family, we've been feeding these dear ones, some of them straining to connect. We've been doing it from our house. And today, by your grace, we are here. We are here, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love. you are that grace we are talking about. You are the grace. And we are so grateful. And now as we start, we are starting with you. We'll continue with you. We'll add with you. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. I declare refreshment in our hearts, in our spirits, and in the hearts and the spirits of many who are following us. Refreshment, refreshment. In, Jesus in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And again we say, Amen. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, yes, we, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen and amen. I would request Pastor Amos to give me my phone. I want to follow up to mention a few people following here to the glory of God and we mention them all to the glory of God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. When we thank you, Jesus. We thank just lift your heart. Just lift your heart and tell him thank you. Just lift your heart. Just 
just lift your hand. Oh, we adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. Again, just lift your heart and adore him. Give him all the adoration. It is such a miracle to be back to church. It is such a miracle to be back to church. My sons and my daughters, after many months, many months we couldn't come together. We couldn't be here. We couldn't come together. But look at what our Lord has done. Look at what God has done. Look at what our Redeemer has done. Look at what the Lord has done. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we praise you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we adore your holy name. Father, we say you are God Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Christians, wherever you are following us from, I welcome you to this Come Back Fellowship. And I'm calling it Come Back because it is a real Come Back. By the grace of God, we are alive. By the grace of God, we are back to church for the Tuesday fellowship. I've been feeding you, hallelujah. Together with the patron and my family, we've been feeding you from our house. Now you know how our home is. But you know what? It's just a humble home that God was using as an altar to share his word to all of us. Hallelujah. And now from today... Though we are an hour ahead from today, Tuesday, 6th of October, the year 2020, year of the Lord, I am here to launch the coming back of the prayers beyond boundaries, Tuesday, Bible study, back to church. Hallelujah. It is such an honor to see all of us here. And such an honor to see those who are following from far. Come so Disho, thank you so much. Muraidi Richard, I'm sure you are on your way when you commented on this. Gabriel Gatonga, all the way from Doha. This is a gentleman saying, we don't have a church. I wait to be taught the word of God by you. Kaidri, let, let this gentleman and the, all the others from Asia know that we are happy. Clap for them. Gabriel Gatonga, I couldn't do this when I was in the house, but now we are back. It is an honor have you, having you. Mary Kenodia, where are you following us from? Kaidri, tell us that so that we can appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Purity Waboy, thank you so, so much. Lucy Nyabura is such an honor to have you. Uh, Lucy, you're supposed to be here. It is okay. For those who not make to be here and you are prayers, you belong to prayers, Beyond Boundaries Ministries, we do understand. Keep following from wherever you are. Uh, but Kaidre keep commenting and pray with us to the glory of God. Sarome Duo, it is such an honor. God bless you. Carol Jobs, thank you. Pamela Gatwiri, Gabriel Gatonga, Mam Shiro, thank you. Pastor Susan Karioki, I can see you seated. You are commenting on your way. It's such an honor to be here. James Karongo, Kulia, thank you so much. Mary Gojiri, I can see you. Thank you. Is she the one? Thank you so much. This my mask, this mask here. And we thank God for so many, so many. We will continue checking on you and to the glory of God. We want to tell us, ladies and gentlemen, that this is the prayers beyond boundaries ministries. What is our vision? To see transformed. Let's go together. To see transformed nations and their leaders through the power of of prayers by the working of the Holy Spirit. So if we don't pray, then leaders and nations are not transformed. 
And what is our mission? We have a mission here. For those who are following us and maybe probably for the first time, we've been saying this, but you know what? We have to tell you why we are here. We are here for this one thing, to see transformed nations and their leaders through the power of prayer by the working of the Holy Spirit. And again, the mission to mobilize individuals, families, leaders, and nations in order to teach sensitize and encourage them to have a prayerful lifestyle by organizing regular prayer meetings and events. Do I live the vision? Yes, I live the vision and you also live the vision to God be the glory. We mobilize people to order to teach, sensitize. That's why we are here today. I am sensitizing you, amen? And we sensitize one another to make you feel you really want this thing. It is the word of God that sets people free. Hallelujah. And what are our core values now that we are in church? The prayers, build boundaries, ministries. We have many, many ladies and gentlemen. We have many core values. But allow us to mention just a few to the glory of God. Number one, prayers as a lifestyle. We don't wait for Sunday. We don't wait for Tuesday to share in the prayer. Amen. So it's a lifestyle, even as we walk, as we drive in the matato, wherever. Kindly join us and let us be beyond boundaries. It is prayers as a lifestyle. The other one is pursuit of righteousness. The other one, truth and moral integrity. Upholding Christian family values. Accountability. Unity of purpose. And compassion. And we keep telling people that we have a slogan. We are a Daniel generation. generation. We, who survive, people of faith, who survive and thrive even in difficult times by the power of S. I was about to come back to the whole thing, but we survive and thrive even in difficult uh, situations. Have we survived throughout the pandemic? Have we survived throughout the pandemic? Because we are people of faith. We don't go by what people are saying. We go by what the word of God is saying to the glory of God. Amen. Mother Waboro, thank you. Kawa heo the kasarani. Blessed and we are so honored to have you to the glory of God. Hallelujah. I was coming to launch this officially. And then as we continue, I'll bring our patron who is already with us to continue with this and to the glory of God. Amen. Allow me to thank God for our pastors, Pastor Amos, Pastor Susan, Pastor Julius. It's an honor to have you. The leadership of the church is such an honor to have all of you here. My brother John Jenga, my pastor, it is also an honor to have you just there with me to the glory of God. From the time we started ministering from our house, and God made our home an altar, and it will continue being an altar, of course, you know on Fridays, like coming Friday from 7.30, you'll be following me live, right? Yes, an international forum. I know you have gotten to understand so many things. At times it's good to sit and enjoy, but I also know that there are moments you desired to have to follow. Especially those, that's why we came. But this thing we call data, you have to have Wi-Fi. And not all of us have Wi-Fi in the house. Not all of us have Wi-Fi on our phones. And, and so I know, at times you watch and you are telling God, God, I would want to have this thing in church. And here we are. That's why I was coming to launch it again. Launch the Bible study back. That the Bible study is back to church to the glory of God. Amen? Amen? Ladies and gentlemen, God speaks to be obeyed, not to be heard. And I've been saying that whenever God has spoken, wherever God speaks, whenever he speaks, he doesn't speak just to be heard, but he speaks to be obeyed. And from the time we started over, I know you have heard a lot. I would request that we have maybe two or three people to tell us a few things. Just, just comment on a few things. And then I'll usher in the patron. 
this he's the one who teaches us in this and to the glory of god amen amen and amen what are these things number one that you have learned and you have been feeling thank god i'm in another level can i hear it my daughter we have learned so much from our houses right yes. number one thing praise jesus hallelujah um, i have come to learn that in the wilderness we cannot grow because we go through so many and we think by going that going through those troubles that we are going to grow but when we read the word of god and we meditate on it we grow because the word of god is life and amen. when we read the word we receive life in amen Jesus. look at that look at that the word of god is everything he, she's saying that patron told us of course, through the word, because patron knows very well that the word of God is the standard. So even when you say our patron told us, always be remembering our patron told us according to the word of God. Amen? Yes, yes because the word of God is our standard. And he, she's saying that, and it's an honor, dear ones, as you follow, that in the wilderness, nothing grows in the wilderness. And wilderness life can be hard. But the word of God will get its roots even in the wilderness. The word of God will make you blossom even in the wilderness. Even in the wilderness. And thank God that we have been in this pandemic called wilderness all over the world. And our spirits are growing as we desire God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. Wow, I worship God for his faithfulness. We continue. Another one. Yes, brother Murray the Richard. Please it's okay. Go. Use the use the mask plus this because when you have the mask, we can have we can share the mic. It's okay. Okay, please God. Hallelujah. So there's a point that I remember mm -hmm. uh, about the soil mm -hmm. and the heart. Uh -huh. and so Patron was saying that our hearts are like soil yes and when you plant something in the soil it grows mm -hmm. and the same case applies to our hearts whatever we plant mm -hmm. continually grows so we are supposed to take care of what we plant in our hearts because it will actually grow and Hallelujah. that will be our character thank you so much my son look at it we cannot regret tuning in using our data struggling to have internet over those months just to follow the bible study we did it again and again i say from our house we made our house the altar because the gospel cannot be quarantined the gospel cannot be at the curfew the gospel cannot be locked and the lord was using us and for those people who desired to grow are in another level and so we are we were told that our hearts are ready soil whatever you plant on any soil grows whatever so it is upon you it is upon me to plant the right things and what have we been planting the word the word of god amen amazing two people the other side can i hear too also wababa it's such an honor and i like it when wababa speaks english this is amazing we thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. When, when she came into church, she was telling me, I cannot speak in English, but look at what the anointing of God, what the word of God does. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Baba, tell us. What I understand through yes. this teaching, yes. I understand that God hates sin, but not sinner. Wow. Wow. God hates sin, but, but not, not sinners. sinners. So are we having sinners who are following? God doesn't hate you. God doesn't hate you. God hates the sin. So he's telling all the sinners, come unto me. Come unto me. And that's why we are here today. Amazing. I know so many things that you can say. Can we hear one more? Give it to Sister Nancy. It's such an honor. As long as you have this, you can. Thank you. Yes, Sister Nancy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I thank God for our patron. Uh, he has been teaching us about the word of God and uh, one thing I learned is that it's only through the word of God our minds are renewed. Wait, wait a minute. It is only through the word of God that our minds are 
renewed continue girl yes and uh, every answer we need in this life everything that pertains to life kila kitu ambacho tunahitaji you can only get the right answer in the word of god hallelujah yes so the word of god answers all questions of life we thank you jesus we thank you jesus we thank you jesus we thank you this is prayers beyond boundaries ministries bible study every tuesday for the past how many months almost of the first seven months we've been feeding you from our house that we made an altar but by the grace of god and by the hope we had in god because the hope of the righteous shall never be cut off we are back to church and i came today to launch our coming back to church we'll be having this from 6 p.m all the way to 7 that we had said up to 8 if possible and to the glory of god just understanding the word of god that sets people free hallelujah i'll get brother jenga to also tell us something very crucial and then i will invite the patron but before then i have my own sister who is following this from nakuru this is my sister who brought me up you know her she was my Sunday school teacher She's my biological sister. She believes in me. And whenever she she, she follows, whenever she hears or and whenever she sees the husband to the si- little sister. You people didn't get what I'm saying. Whenever she sees the husband to the little sister. In this case who is the little sister and the husband preaching the gospel, she bows in worship she worship god she adores god she gets very excited to see her little sister the little sister that she took to church the little sister that she took to church that she mentored to grow in god and the little sister today has become her own pastor what a nona what a miracle and you know what made the little sister to grow the word And you know what has made the husband to the little sister to be what he is the word of God. And now thank you so much my dear sister Mama Lina we call her teacher Joyce Mwangi. She's saying hallelujah to the Mosai Bible study back to church God has answered our prayers. Amen. You also have another sister a big sister who is a pastor in United Kingdom and she's following right now in the name Pastor Alice Wamogo you remember her Pastor Alice she's watching right now from UK such an honor Pastor Alice to follow us we are back to church God has answered our prayers amen I also have a little sister the little sister has a little sister by the name Grace Favored also all the way from United Kingdom is such an honor God bless you so much Allow me to read this one. Cantreos yes. I am following from Botswana. I'm a daughter of PBB. We are grateful to God for this wonderful moment. We are drawing close to him, our father who loves us. All the way from Botswana, let this lady know that we are excited. <laughs> this is amazing. Monique Miano thank you so much where are you watching from home all on the way it is okay i had just a joy for shege wow my spiritual mother you are doing a great job i say we thank you jesus jesus we thank you jesus we thank you jesus even skaraja from kilimani ready to study it's okay even keep following i i said because of time and the curfew if you are able to come join us come let us eat this word together where you don't need data and that's why we are all here we don't need internet but for those who are able to follow and you are there and you are okay with that it is okay but you know what there is a difference between being in this fellowship and being alone where you are 
Francis Derito, watching from Umoja 3 Estate. Kaidri, keep clapping. Let these people know that we are excited. Manase Kama, wow. Preach on, my reverend. I don't know from where. God bless you so much. It is such an honor. Maina Joseph Mwangi, God speaks only to be obeyed, not to be heard. You are right, man. You are right. Thank you so, so much. So another one. What is this? Among many things, yeah. we've been taught so much and we are in another level. But you can tell us one thing. There's one thing uh, I made a conclusion. Yes. From what Patron was teaching about the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower. That the life is in the seed. Life is in the seed. And the seed is the word of God. And the seed is the word of God. And as my brother Muravi have said, yes. our heart is a fertile ground. So when you, when you plant this seed in this fertile ground, automatically this seed will, will grow. Wow. So when you have the word of God in your heart, the word of God will reflect in you because the word of God has fallen in a fertile ground which is in your heart. Wow. The word of God is a seed. Yes. And we are planting this seed. Mm -hmm. And you have got to choose where. You know, the, the seed grows from wherever you deposit it, where you plant it. Yes. F and our hearts being vata, mm -hmm. you know, fertile, being fertile. fertile soil. Yes. When the word of God comes in, mm -hmm. it grows yes. all to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word that has brought us this far. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the transformation that has taken place in our lives, that the transformation that has taken place in our families, the transformation that has taken place in our nation, the transformation that has, transformation that has taken place in all these dear ladies and gentlemen from all over the world. It is all because of your word. Your word. Your word. That you honor more than your name. <laughs> you honor your word more than your name we are so grateful we count ourselves blessed and favored to be seated today in church and every Tuesday from today from 6pm just to be taught your word we repeat it because we master by repet repetition Lord Almighty I declare more grace, more understanding, more favor unto all of us as we follow you. May your word today heal. May your word today locate jobs and businesses that were lost and bring back. May your word today locate that peace that God lost. May your word today locate our desires and honor them. In Jesus' mighty name. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord. Have your way. Yes, Lord, it's all about you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue dining, as we continue enjoying this word, dear ones, I want to bring to you your daddy. I call him my patron, but above all, my pastor. And more so, more so something that humbles me, my husband. Somebody said, let me tell you, somebody said that I pretend how I love him. And I'm here to tell that somebody and the many somebodies, if loving my husband is pretension, if I am pretending, I will, I will pretend to my grave. If loving this man is pretending, I will pretend to my grave, loving this man. If supporting him is pretending, I'll pretend to my grave. If I fikir and Guinea, if having him here, because I know there are those people who fight him and say he's all sorts of things. But this is my own husband who was called by God not to be the overseer of the ministry, 
but he was called to support the overseer of the ministry. If having him supporting me, walking with me, loving me is a throw, I will throw to my grave. This is very, I'm, and I'm very serious when I'm saying this. It doesn't matter. He's not perfect. Because I'm not perfect. God couldn't have given him a perfect woman. Because I'm not perfect. Nobody is 100% perfect. But we are marching on to the mark of perfection. Amen? The Lord brought me into his life. And he brought him into my life to complement one another. Not to compete. So, I will never compete with whoever. I'm saying this because I've heard so much from this phone. So much from this phone and so much from even the comments that come. But whether today or the days to come, anyone who fights my husband is fighting the God that I serve. So Billy is somebody somewhere to fight the Lord God that I serve. Some, not here, somewhere. Amen. Amen. Because as you are giving your testimonies of how he has been a blessing to me, to you, to you all, you can imagine how I feel. I got married to a man who was not a preacher. But I kept praying that one day he will hold this microphone. And when he is holding this microphone, there is opposition somewhere. Anyone who is ready to fight the God I serve, fight this gentleman. Father, have your way as we move to another level using your servant. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we say, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, For your love, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, you Jesus we thank you Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord welcome sir thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you my dear loving wife yes I am I thank God for you I'm proud to be yes and yes. I honor God for you. Thank you you are a blessing thank you so much yeah thank you thank you thank you I wouldn't yeah. be what I am today and if I was given another man. Mm. But your humility, mm. your love, your sacrifice has brought me this far. Thank you. If it and was I know, another I know this man, is coming you see, from jumping, your heart. Jumping, jumping, doing right. what? Yeah. Nobody else could compliment. <laughs> you know, like now I just came from Western mm. province. Yes. And the children needed to be taught. They are in school. And a lot had to be done. How many men would sit in the house and take their children through classes when the mother is somewhere in Western Province? How many? Me. Only one. How many? Pastor Amos. Pastor Julius. See, it's only one. How many men can allow to be left really early in the morning? Really early in the morning and for 20 years wake up at 4 a.m to go do what I do on radio and leave a man who will take care of little children and help them grow. How many men? Here I am. Thank you, sir. To God be all the glory. You are not perfect, and but you are the nobody best is for perfect. me. Nobody is perfect. And you, you have said it here. You are the best for me. Yeah, nobody is perfect. With but all your are, many mistakes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and your mistakes. You are the best for uh, me. At least we still get along. Even with we those, still get along. Even with those mistakes. We forget everything else. And we move on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So welcome. May the Lord bless you, sir. And forgiveness. Why you today you are leaving me? I'm leaving. I want to sit and then I enjoy. I was coming to lunch. I've already done that. And Ladies and gentlemen, those who are following us, this is prayers, build boundaries, Bible study, back to... Church. Church. So yeah. I was coming yeah. to bring you and yes. to bring all this order and to declare back to church, back to church, back to church wow. uh, Bible study. And from now, you continue yeah. to the glory of God. And it's good to see all these beautiful Look faces. Yeah. Look at them. Look How at you, these great people. Yeah. It's a joy to see you all. Thank and you. I thank God.
Thank you. Thank you. So in this wow, case, wow. in this Thank case, you. I don't have to be there always. <laughs> yeah. Can we agree on that? Yes. In the, house, yes. In the house, I had to be uh, there always. She should be here with us uh, now, all now, the time. Now I'm supposed to actually I'm, I'm supposed to be ministering in a mashakaya somewhere. Yeah, I, I remember. But I had to I didn't cancel that. To see you. I had to cancel that just right. to come do this to the glory yeah. of God. Then right. I do it again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. We keep uh, wow. moving. Yeah. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, you have very a whole much. one uh, one hour. An hour. Then About an hour. you have one hour. Uh, thank yeah. you, sir. Wow. Thank you, thank you. And even for the comments that I've received, I've had. I thank God. That is awesome. Wow. You are blessed. Yes, I'm sure you are. And it's good to hear from you and even from what you have been learning. And I'm sure transformation is it's taking place in us. Just the way the Word of God teaches us. At times we actually can't even tell how it happens how it takes place but it actually continues every time even when we don't get to know it because once we sow the word of god in our hearts it is producing sour sour uh, thank you thank you very much so even for those who are viewing us i know this is a change we were not used to having the fellowship at this hour we were starting at 7 30 and actually it's my delight to see you and to have you here in church as our evangelist has said to relaunch the fellowship and have it back again to to church and i'm sure we are going to continue growing and i'm sure even for each one of us you, you have been following even online uh, yeah some of us and as she was saying i know it, it's a challenge at times you don't have the bundles at times it takes longer than you can actually even be able to afford but the good thing is you can still go back again to it and uh, and uh, get to listen over and over again when you get the bundles and we are speaking god's favor and blessing upon each one of us so that we are able to continue having that even from our homes i know it is not something that is easy i'm not saying it's uh, just a walkover it is not because we have to continue focusing on the word that is the only way this transformation can can take place or it can happen yeah it doesn't happen in any other way so it's just focusing on the word of truth and getting to have the understanding understanding is very important it is key because you can have the knowledge of it in your head but if it's not in your heart it will not produce it will not bear fruit yet you still have the truth because this is the truth and we all have this truth everybody in fact almost everybody are christian they all have a bible and how come it is not transforming them how come it's not changing them yet it is the truth so it has to get out of the book itself into our hearts but it has to come through our, our minds we have to study we have to keep on hearing the word we have to be transformed by the word as we are sowing it in our hearts. And as we always say, that it's not that we are the best. No. Uh, but it is good that even what God has already uh, planted in us, that we are able to share with you and those who even who are viewing and following us from wherever in the diaspora. Because change is taking place. And you see, that is a desire that we all have. Every one of us wants to have every promise of God working in their lives. Do you desire that? Yes. Yeah. But we don't get to see it manifesting all the time. So it is now our responsibility because God has done his part. And now it is our responsibility that we take that which he has already provided for us that we get to have the understanding of it and now apply it in our lives because if we don't apply it in our lives and take that responsibility and i'm emphasizing on that because it is your responsibility and my responsibility that we apply this word in our lives and that's why it's important to have the understanding and we have to see it the way god has already done it for us the way God sees you is the way we are supposed to be seeing each other. And even as mom was saying here, 
even with the messages that people send, me, it doesn't affect me because me, I'm following the, the word. So whether people are negative, whether they will comment negatively, whether they will throw stones, that is up to them. Yeah. It doesn't affect my heart because I have the truth and I'm continuing to receive this truth and to digest it so that I know I am shielded at all times. I do not take offense. Yeah, I don't take offense at all, at all, at all, at all. And you see, I'm not going to see them in a negative way. I'm still going to see them in a loving manner. Jesus loved everyone. Right? And God loves each one of us. So the same thing we are also supposed to do and love one another. But we cannot just love if you don't have the love of God flowing out of you. So you have, it has to be received in your heart. You have to receive that love so that you're also able to, to give it out. So I'm saying this to encourage even those who are negative and want to maybe even comment negative. It is still okay. Because I understand where you are. I understand your position. Even those who are watching. I'm not saying that probably maybe those who are here. But even those who are also watching, it is okay. So I still love you and I still thank God for you. One time you will see the light. Maybe you are still in the darkness. And that light will still shine in, in you. And you get to see it. Because that's God's desire for each one of us. We are not all the same. And we also don't understand in the same, in the same way. But it's important that we see all that God has made available to us. And he has done it by his grace, independent of us. He did it even before we came into this life. So we have to understand it. And of course, the word of God hasn't changed. Even God hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and, and forever. Yeah, he's the same all through. So when we focus on the truth and believe on this truth, it's a guarantee it will surely work. Right? Yes, I love to encourage that so that we focus and encourage one another also so that we walk in this truth. Where you don't get to have the understanding. You see, like now when we were just with evangelists, we were just facing the cameras. Right? Yeah, we were not seeing your faces. Thank God now I can see your faces. Yeah, those who are here. And that time, because it was just a camera, I could not tell how the response is. But from here, at least you can even raise your hand and even ask a question. Because in, in a fellowship like we were doing before, we can get now to interact with one another. And I'm sure even those who are watching us, they can also send the messages and ask questions. So I want us to continue from where we were last time. Because we said our focus, we have been studying Mark 4. That has been the foundation. So that we see the power of God's word. So that we, we get to have this word and the promises that God has given us. Uh, sowed into our, into our hearts. And we said the word of God is seed. Right? And please, if you don't understand it, just raise your hand and ask. Because if we don't get to see the word of God as seed, and I remember we read Genesis 8, is it 822? Yeah, and that principle will never change so long as this earth is here. Uh, now, who is going to read for us that one? Genesis 8, 22. Because the word of God is it. And then we'll go to... There is a, the other scripture that I also said that we should also reflect on. Yeah, so that we see that. Yeah, all right? Jenga. Your Genesis. This is your Bible? Uh, uh, okay. yeah. But you can just read it from there. Genesis... If, I'm sure it was Genesis 8, 22. Yes. I don't know which version you're reading from. NSB. Uh, okay. NSB. 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 Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it go says, ahead. Yeah. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest... Mm -hmm. And cold and heat, mm. and summer and winter, a day and night shall not cease. Yeah, so long as the earth it remains. remains. Mm. Yeah, seed time and harvest. harvest. It will never cease. Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, that will never change. change. I'm saying this because we need to see 
about the seed time. Sowing, that is also in there in Mark 4. It's not that we have not studied these scriptures. I know we have studied them, but it is important that we see it again. I know we read that at one point. So I want us to see how this seed works from the word of God. And I want us to uh, reflect even with what prophet Isaiah also prophesied about how the word works. All right? We know the word of God is an incorruptible seed. First Peter what? 2, 23. You know, it is important that you see it so that it is in your heart. It becomes part of you. That you know the word of God can never be changed. We say that is the most powerful thing in the universe. Yeah, It's the most powerful thing in the universe. And nobody can change that. And that's why the word of God declares and we know that it's already settled in heaven. God himself cannot change. He obeys his own word. Right? And this is the word that upholds everything together. Are we together? Yeah? So that we see it that way. And we know that the word of God is so powerful. That when you are declaring the word of God. And the angels are out there. And they, they hear. Because they hearken to the voice of his word. Are we together? Yeah? So that we see that. So we see it that way. In the same, same, same way. So now let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 55. And so we are going to read that scripture again. Isaiah 65. Oh, 55, not 65. Uh, 55. And we can read from verse... Let's read from verse 6. You seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Yeah? Let's continue. Let him return to the Lord. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways, my ways. Who was it, who was it being addressed to? even before we continue from there. From what we have just read, who was this being addressed to? It's good to think about it. Because you see, from this scripture here in verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. And I know this is something that we have actually said many times. And we believe that now the thoughts of God, of course, is beyond us. But he, when we read this and we say, oh, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. But is this a present day truth? Think about it. Is this a present day truth? This was in the past. Who was it being addressed to? And is it now for us to say that we do not have the thoughts of God? We can't think like him after Jesus has come. I want us to think about that. Yeah? Because when you say that you don't have his thought, if you interpret it in the wrong way, you are putting yourself in the, bond in the bondage that you cannot have the thoughts of oh God. Yet, Jesus came. We have the mind of Christ. Huh? We have the mind of Christ. So, it is important that we see it. Yeah? In the present day, truth in the new covenant of grace. Alright? 
so that we don't interpret it in the wrong way because you'll be putting yourself in in bondage you get it Jenga? Yes. yeah so let's continue with the question that i asked who was it being addressed to from what we have just read there let's go back again verse verse 7 let the wicked forsake his way you get that let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts so it's not for you as a believer uh, yeah it is not for you as a believer this is for the wicked that's why he's being told your thoughts who is wicked and not my thoughts uh, yeah. <laughs> are we together yeah thank you for clapping uh, yeah so that we change and renew our minds and align our thoughts according to the word i know at times we read the word and we read through so fast and we get to miss out what is being said and when you miss it out does god change he will not change who is going to suffer the consequences it's you yeah you're raising your hand oh okay yeah so it is addressed to the wicked and let him return to so he's being advised to return to the to the lord and he will have mercy on him and to our god for he will abundantly not that word abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways to the wicked but to us who are believers and we have christ in us we have the mind of christ hallelujah yeah. we have the mind of christ let's continue and my thoughts okay, i've read that and my thoughts and uh and my thoughts than your thoughts for as the rain comes down as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud all right that it may give seed to the sower it may give seed to the sower and and bread to the eater so get it so in the same manner so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what i please and it shall prosper in the thing for which i sent it that's a guarantee are you seeing it that way so when he's giving us this so when you go back again to mark 4 yeah and you see the sower so so was there the seed so it is who is going to sow the seed yeah Sama, it is i yeah it is you who is going to sow the seed so if you don't see it in this light and you just assume that things will just happen without your sowing and we have how many conditions of the heart of the soil from mark 4 yeah because how many conditions are there there are four yeah these are conditions of the heart and it doesn't mean that when you have prepared your ground properly then it will always remain that way are we together it doesn't mean that if you prepare the ground if you don't sow weeds will still come it will they will still sprout so you have to prepare your ground so you can have the the four conditions working in your life at different times but you don't want it that way you want to have the fourth condition are you there so that we read that yeah the, the parable of the sower in mark 4. Uh, you can just go ahead and read it from verse one uh, or from verse three no you don't have to read from verse one mm. mark 
Let me see. Mark 4. You can read from uh, verse 13. Verse 13. Yeah. And he said, and he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all these parables? Mm -hmm. The sower shows the word. Okay, before you continue. You remember what we said? That this is the mother of all parables. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have the understanding of this parable, how will you understand any other? It's important that we emphasize. Yeah? This is the mother of all parables. And this is a clear picture of how the kingdom of God works. This is how the kingdom of God works. So we need to digest this and have this understanding so that we know how the kingdom works. If we don't have the understanding, then the enemy will come and snatch away the word. He is after the word because he knows this word is truth and it never fails. If you work it, it's a guarantee. It will work anytime. Every time. All the time. Are we together? It's a guarantee that it will surely work. Okay, then go ahead. Verse 14. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, yeah. the farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. Mm -hmm. The seed that fell on the footpath mm -hmm. represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Okay. The seed on the okay, before you continue, don't rush. Uh, yeah, it says there that the, uh, the evil one will come and take it away. All right? Then, of course, you would even be wondering, then why, what's the purpose of reading the word if I saw it, then the enemy just comes and takes it away. All right? So when you go to, let's, let me read Ma Matthew. We go to the book of Matthew. Kidogo too. Matthew 13. Praise the Lord. Matthew 13 verse 19. Matthew 13 19. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. Therefore, hear the parable. Yeah, oh, so that is verse 18. I want 19. But let me just read the verse 19, 18 as well. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears, all right? So you're hearing the word. Yeah, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. Are you seeing the difference from what is in Mark and what is in Matthew? What is the difference? Yeah? What is the key word there? Under understanding. So if you don't understand it, then the evil one can take it away. Whose responsibility is it to understand? It's my responsibility. It's your responsibility. The evil one cannot stop you from understanding the word. He has no power to make you not understand the word. Hallelujah. So if you don't understand it, it is you who is choosing not to understand it. Because you are not focusing on the word. You are not meditating on the word. Because you have to prepare your ground so that you don't give him room. Now let's continue reading the other one. Verse 16. Yeah. In a similar way, mm -hmm. these are the ones on whom seed was shown on lucky places mm -hmm. who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. Don't we do that so many times? Yes. Yeah. And we get so excited and we think that now I've received the word and you say it was so powerful. Uh, yeah, yeah. But when you walk out there and you meet a challenge, you can't even remember uh, yeah, yeah, what you were so excited about. Am I right? Yeah, am I right? Yes. Because it is not it's rooted, it's not rooted in your in your heart. So it will not work. Uh, continue. And they have no 
and they and they have no firm root mm -hmm. in themselves, mm -hmm. but are only temporal. Then, when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they fall away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, affliction comes because of the word. Because of the word. So the enemy is just after the the word. The word, the word of God is the most powerful force in the universe. So the enemy is just after. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for the, for the clapping here. Yeah? Yeah, the word of God is the most powerful force in the universe. It's the most powerful weapon that you can ever use. Are we together? Yeah. So we need to learn how uh, to hear God and understand. We choose to understand. Even you who is watching us, you need to get to hear the word so that faith, as you are hearing, faith is coming. As you are hearing the word, faith is coming. All right? And this is something that you do continuously. You cannot say that I've now had, I don't need to hear it anymore. You have to believe. Of course, we have said that many times that you have to hear. You either that is through studying, and of course, you reading the word of God and getting to hear the teachings. And you meditating on the word all through. You get to hear. You receive that word. You believe the word. And you speak the word. And you act on the word. I said we are going to get to the point of where we act on the word. But let's have this foundation grounded in us completely. So that we see that this is what I need. This is a foundation. That I have to believe the word. And I know the word is settled. So that I will declare the same that God has already declared over my my life and over your life. Because if it is true and it will not return back again to him empty, it has to accomplish that which it was sent to do. Then I know everything that I'm going through in this life, however difficult the situation is, the answer is in the word of God. But are we applying this? Are we doing this every single day? Are we walking in this truth? It is your responsibility and my responsibility. When I got to see this and decided and I purposed that I will not allow anything that is not in, the line, in, in line with the word of God to come against me. Because I have the Holy Spirit in me. He's upon me. So I know I have the defense. I have the shield of faith. So I have to use my, my mouth. Amen. Yeah, I have to use my, my mouth. And when I use it, I know it's a guarantee it will surely bear fruit. Amen. Are you together? Yeah. In any area, whether it is sickness, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your relationships, it doesn't matter. The answer is in the word. All right? That's why we are supposed to focus on the word. Believe the word. Because every promise that God has given us, he has given it to us for us to have that understanding focus on that promise meditate on that promise just like abraham did he was promised that he's going to be the father of exactly and then how long did he take but he got to a point where he was fully persuaded all right he had to meditate on the word he has he had actually to say even when his name was changed he had to open his mouth he's no longer abraham he is who abraham and what does abraham mean father of so he was declaring what he was declaring the word he was declaring the same thing god had said are you doing the same thing yourself or you're just there waiting for god to do something and change your life without your involvement and yet you're not even speaking the word but you want that change to come into your life it is that's why i always say it is not magic it is not magic, but it is a guarantee that when we walk in this truth, because me, I'm a testimony, and I know I can even continue testifying so many things that have changed in my life just because of focusing on this truth. And understanding that this parable is key with the Isaiah 55 and what it means and how the word was sent down here. Because the word came, am I right? He sent his word and heal them 
not he didn't send his word to heal them he sent his word and heal them and what did he do and saved us from our our destruction all right are you together which scripture is that eh? psalm 107 verse 20 yeah let me tell you if you can keep on declaring this this will renew your mind as faith is coming your mind is also being renewed you remember what we were even teaching last time that because of the way we came the condition that we came into this life we have now to have our minds reprogrammed again we have the new spirit and god uses only our spirits to enlighten us yeah yeah god uses our spirits to enlighten us that is actually what he uses the candle of the lord all right that is what is going to enlighten us i don't want to get into the details of that because i know there is another scripture that talks about the spirit is that searches yeah all things all right and we think the holy spirit is the one that is searching all things he's the holy spirit he knows everything he's the spirit of god he can't go and search the spirit the same spirit that he is part of he is the spirit <laughs> so it is not him but we'll get to that some other time let me not expound on that right now are you together so because of the state that we came in we have to reprogram our minds that's why romans 12 2 is very key eh, that we have to renew our minds we have to continuously do that it's a process that will never stop you will never exhaust this truth so long as you're in this life but you can walk in this truth it doesn't matter which level you are at right now all right you might not be the, in the position that i'm in right now you might even be far much ahead than i am but you still have to continue renewing your your mind when the word of god tells tells us because now when i receive the news the new spirit and i have christ in me now i am totally a new creation that never existed before are we together so now that new man who has come he is perfect all right but now my mind is still there in the thinking of that old that old man so if i don't have my mind renewed continuously every time i read the word of god and i get to see and you'll actually have it interpreted in the light of the new testament are you together then you know once you receive that in your heart you will surely know because the holy spirit is is there he's part of you he'll give you that conviction and you'll know this is the truth and you have that rest and you walk in that truth and you get to know more and more you continue building and renewing your mind your life will continuously be transformed from one glory to another not by you it is not your work it is by the spirit are you together but you have to receive from this truth this is the most important thing that we can do in this life i know there are things that we have to do in this life of course because you have to look for money right you have to continue feeding but when you are grounded in this truth uh, everything that you require will will actually come after you it will be following you and there is no lack in the kingdom if that is a promise that has been given and it has already been accomplished it is for my benefit i'll do everything possible to ensure that i want to see that that truth and walk in that light by faith because everything is by by faith and it surely works where were we at verse 18, verse 18. Yes. okay and others uh -huh. are the ones on whom mm -hmm. seed was planted among the thorns mm -hmm. These are the ones who have had the word, but the worries of the world. Mm, the worries the of this world. The cares of this world. Uh -huh. And the deceitfulness of riches. Yes. Are you backing those words? Cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches. riches. And that is where most of the people are. Right? Yes. Yeah, that, because what they are after is what? Wealth. Yeah. And you end up actually getting getting that deception 
and the enemy wants you to focus on that so that you don't get to the next one yes. yeah these are we said these are conditions of the heart all right the earth is the same but we have the different types of actually let me not use our types it's a condition of the heart because we have to prepare the ground ourselves all right yes. i continue and the desires for other other things enter in and choke the word it becomes unfruitful it becomes unfruitful you have been told for sure it will become unfruitful, unfruitful. so you might be striving struggling trying and you still don't see the fruitfulness yet the fruitfulness is already in you as a believer because that's god's design yes. all right i right, go ahead and those are the ones on whom seed was sown on the good soil mm -hmm. and they hear that's the verse 20 eh? 20 yeah and they hear mm -hmm. the word and mm -hmm. accept it so and they accept mark it. those words again yeah and they accept it hear the word and accept, accept it yes. yeah so that means you receive it mm -hmm. all right yes. and how do you receive the word you have to continuously meditate on the word on the word yeah uh -huh. And bear fruit mm -hmm. that is 30 60 and 104 yes yeah so uh, what does that tell us yeah it is progressive all right it doesn't just bear fruit all at once it is progressive all right yes. 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold so when you i will just read the next one so that we can connect together verse 21 mm -hmm. and he was saying to them a lamp is not brought to be put under a basket mm -hmm. is it or under a bed mm -hmm. is it not brought to be put sorry is not brought to be put on the lampstand mm -hmm. for nothing is hidden except to be revealed nor has anything been secret mm -hmm. but that it will become to light Verse 23. okay okay yeah let's jump yeah i don't focus on that right now mm -hmm. yeah let's go because i want to ask to see yeah because now you have prepared the ground and you have sown that seed yeah, what should you do go to verse uh, uh, 26 yes 26 says yeah. and he was saying the kingdom of god is like a man who casts seed upon the soil so the kingdom of god god is like so yes we are being given that picture mm -hmm. how the kingdom functions all right yes and now remember what we read in also in isaiah 55 55 all right okay go ahead the kingdom of god is like a man who casts seed upon the soil and he goes to bed at night and gets up by day so what does he do yeah you go to bed bed so what does that tell you meditate yeah you meditate but you do what you rest all right uh, you rest when you go to bed do you know even how that seed grows you can't tell nobody can tell but is it working yes is it growing are you seeing it no you're not seeing it can you understand how it is growing no but you're told you go to rest don't think that because now you have actually spoken the word of god it will just work instantly all right now you have to have that rain sent uh, coming down from heaven uh, what is the rain is the word of is the word of god so you continue studying the word of god focusing on the word of god and thanking god knowing that this word you are watering that seed you are continuously watering that that seed as you are resting it is growing and then they yeah, are finished that other part verse 27 and she would sleep yeah mm -hmm. yeah verse 27 and, and he goes to bed at night and gets up by day and the seed sprouts and grows how he himself does not know yeah he himself does not no no so we should not be worried how the word will work it is performing but i should not be worried i should be at rest knowing because this is the truth how it is going to produce i don't know but i have sown and i'm going to continue sowing not just sowing i'm just going to continue watering that seed because the word uh, the word of god we have said many times it's the light a seed will need light right of course you have you have it on the ground now 
right with a good soil you have prepared your ground because if you don't prepare your ground the seed might not produce the kind of fruit that you that you desire the harvest that you want right if you allow weeds to come the deceitfulness of the riches of this world that people are focusing so much on you are not giving that seed that is already in good ground if you have received that word you're not allowing it now to bear the much fruit are you together yeah so that you get the 30 60 and 100 fold but it's your responsibility to ensure that you continue watering having that light and the, the word of god is light the word of god is of course we know it's a seed yeah, right it is light it is seed and it is the same one that also waters so so that tells you you have to remain focusing on the word of truth how it will produce do not worry you just rest knowing i'm not saying that you go and sleep and just wait until now i'm asleep i'm waiting for the word to no yeah you are resting in that which you have already sown just like the farmers and actually just think about it if you don't sow a seed do you expect any harvest will there be any, any harvest whatsoever what will grow in that ground uh, yeah weeds all right and if you're not sowing what god has promised get this right if you're not sowing what god has already promised there is no way you can go and plant baby yeah and expect to have a harvest of wheat or beans or anything else what you have sown is what will yeah so you have to sow what you want to harvest what you want to see you have to sow it and as you said what we read the other time uh, that the seed itself is the one because the word of god is an incorruptible seed that seed that you have sown will demand of the soil it has the power it will demand of the soil to bring forth what is in itself are you getting this no, let me repeat that again the seed all right let's go now that's why jesus was giving this kind of parable we should not have that what is spiritual and what is in the natural in the physical as they are separate jesus used these parables with what was happening in the natural so that we have a clear picture of how the kingdom works are you together so the seed let's be natural and go to the farming that we all we all actually understand the seed once you sow it into the ground does the soil decide what is going to produce yeah the soil will not decide so don't think that if you just leave things to happen they will just happen they will never you have to sow you have to sow this seed so with that seed that is let's call it what what's a good example to use to use baby yeah maize all right the main seed that you sow in the ground once you sow it in the ground that seed because the seed itself contains contains the power of a lot of let me let me even say that a lot of fruits of babies that come from that one one seed you remember in Isaiah 55 he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater remember even what jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word so there is seed and there is bread for you in the word are you seeing that yeah there is bread and there is seed so that you will never lack if you are continuously sowing and watering and nurturing that seed so the seed of that baby the dna of that seed is in itself right so it will demand of the soil to bring forth 
what is in itself. The soil does not have the power to decide what to grow. Yeah. Same thing, your heart, your heart will not decide what is going to bring forth. It's what you are sowing. So the seed will demand of the, of the soil. So is the kingdom of God. The kingdom, when you have the spirit of God in you, because the kingdom of God is within you. So when you sow this word, yeah, when you sow the word, the promises that God has given, and you sow them into your heart, you meditate, and of course you believe, and you continue watering, so that you don't allow the enemy to come and snatch it away. Now you have the understanding because you are not giving the enemy room. He is not going to take the word away from you. Once you do that, the kingdom that is already within you, the seed once is planted in there, will demand of the kingdom to bring forth that which is in the seed. Amen. Yeah, the promise that is in, in the word. Yeah. So the word of God that is in, corruptible. When you see a promise of God, that God has told you you are righteous. Let's just use that for now. God has said that you are righteous. When you say that you are not righteous and you don't see yourself righteous, why is it that you are saying that? Because you don't have the understanding. Alright? You are allowing the enemy to come and snatch that which is already in you. So he comes and takes it away. And you continue struggling, wondering, how come I'm not seeing myself righteous? I am not holy. Because that seed has not been grounded and it's not getting to have the roots because you have not had the understanding. You must get to understand it as we read in Matthew 13, 19. So when you have that understanding and you meditate on the word and it still becomes part of you, you see yes, God has said I am righteous. I am going to continue saying it. I'm going to speak it. It's not just saying that I'm the righteousness of God. Yes, that's part of it. But you have to believe it. All right? And even when the enemy tells you that you are not righteous because of what you have done, look at even yourself. You have actually even been insulting other people. Look at the messages that you have even been sending, even to evangelists and to the others. Those negative messages I was talking about that you're mentioning here. It doesn't matter. All right? Why is it that you're doing that? Because you're not seeing yourself the way God sees you. You're not believing. You have not been actually in a position to understand that truth. So what should you do? You should focus on studying that. Get to study about righteousness until it becomes part of you. So it is not something that is just imagining in your head, but it is part of you. When you say that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I, am, I know I can come now into the presence of God with no fear, with no condemnation. It doesn't matter what, I, what is happening around me, but that is the truth. I have believed that truth. I have sown that seed and it is producing in my life. What does that silence mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it sinking or is it uh, trying to have the understanding of it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, both. Because it's important. Are you getting that? Yeah. And don't think that this is a formula. Yeah? It is not a formula. Yeah? It is believing on the truth. Right? Because you have Christ in you. You have the Spirit of God in you. The Spirit is working in you. You, you are receiving, you are believing, and of course you act on that. Even if you are head, because you are still having that old program that has not been erased completely, so that you get to have this truth now just bearing fruit from your heart and what is your heart of course we know your heart is your spirit and your soul it has to be aligned with what the spirit of of god declares so you have to align what your thoughts are what is it that you are allowing to actually even be thinking about you should be concerned and even as you're thinking if you're thinking negative don't let it out of your mouth Words are powerful. Words are seeds. Don't allow those negative thoughts to come out of your, or me, of your mouth. If you don't speak them, they will have nowhere to go and 
bring forth that which has come out of your mouth. But when you speak them and you repeat them over and over again, they will get into your heart and they are affecting your, uh, your world. Are you together? And if they are negative, that negative that you are speaking, that judgment will still come at some point. Because you are sending out and this is a spiritual force. We function just like God. We were given the same image and the same way of functioning. That's why we get back again to Genesis in chapter 1 and we see what God said in Genesis 1.26. And that's why we have also been given that picture in Genesis 1. If you read, I think uh, I can't remember exactly up to how many, which, which chapter. But God mentioned what he said. He first said it and then he saw. All right? We do the same thing. At times we are not even conscious of it. But that's how God designed life to be. So if you are saying that which is negative, you will see that which is also negative in your life. We have the same image. So now because we are programmed in that old nature of Adam that we came in through, all of us, if we don't renew our minds, we'll continue thinking in the same way, yet we have the spirit of God in us, we have the truth in us, our spirits, in this, the new spirit that's coming come into, our, into our hearts is 100% perfect. But now we have to hear what the Spirit is saying so that he enlightens us and we renew our minds with the truth and walk in that truth. And as you continue doing this over and over and over and over, it will become part of you. You will not even be struggling in it. But when you think that now I have done my part, now the rest is God. It will never bear fruit. It's not because God doesn't want to, but because you are not participating. We are partners with him. It is our responsibility. The dominion power that he gave man here on earth, let them, what we are saying, God cannot reverse what has already come out of his mouth. What has come out of his mouth becomes law and it's final. Are you together? So because he said, let them, he will never retract that. He never took that back. So it is still us. That's why he gave the earth to man. It is our responsibility. All the chaos that we are seeing here, it's man's responsibility. Because we are not walking in that truth. You might not change the whole of this world. But you can change the world that you are in, your own. <laughs> are we getting it? By declaring what God has already declared over over your life this truth so you can be in this world but not experience what is happening around all over here because your world you are creating it uh, yeah you can be in this world with all these chaos that are going on around here you don't have to be part of that yeah you can be in your own world where you are enjoying the kingdom life because you have allowed the spirit of God now to be leading you by you speaking and declaring God's word. But your focus has to be where? On this truth. It will not just happen because you are wishing it would happen. Or you are hoping it would happen. It will not happen. I tried it. Ask me. It never worked. Many years before when I was still uh, born again. And we used to have quite a number of fric uh, frictions even with my dear loving wife it's not that we didn't love each other but there are some things i never got to understand but when i saw these truths now change came now it doesn't matter even if there is affliction that love can never change because i will not allow the enemy to come and snatch it away from me yeah <clears throat> because now i know it is in my heart i've renewed my mind to that level and i'm still continuing to do that dear ones it is important i know we are all desiring to have the kingdom life working in our lives every day it is already here with us it is not something that we are going to get out there we already have it but we need to be declaring these truths from our mouths this is the most powerful force when you declare god's word and you actually restrain yourself 
from speaking that which is negative because it will still come back to you. You are creating that environment, your world, with what is coming out of your mouth. You might not even be thinking about it, but because that's how God designed life, it is still working. Same thing when we also say that, especially when we come now to forgiveness, because for, for, forgiveness is also foundational. When God tells you to forgive because you're already forgiven, not that you will be forgiven, you have to ensure I am going to study everything that is in this word about forgiveness. So that now, as I forgive, I'm forgiving because I know the truth. It's only the truth that you know that will make you free. It's only through knowledge. All right, Second Peter 1 3. You have to have this knowledge. It will not just drop on you because it's here and it's the truth. You have to have this knowledge from your heart. So when you don't allow the word by you working the word, it will never produce. You have to have that ground prepared. Are we together? Praise the Lord. I know you have many questions. You don't have to ask them now. Now, I would want us to read so that we see practically how the, how the word, how powerful when we know the will of God and we are walking with him and we trust in him and we are trusting in his word that we will stand. Oh, oh but now we only have five minutes. I don't think we are going to be able to go through all this. You remember even what Job said, eh? In Job uh, 22, I think 22, 28, eh, that you shall declare a thing and it will be established. You will declare a thing and it will be established. What are you declaring? What are you declaring over your own life? Over your children, if you have children? Over your husband? What did you hear mom say here about me? Regardless of whatever happens, she will always love me, respect me. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You are declaring. Yeah, all right? And what you are declaring will be established because that is coming from your heart. All right? So, what is it that you are declaring? I declare the same thing over her all the time. Yeah, regardless of whatever I see around us, I know that is the truth and it will surely bring forth. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Alright? So, we can enjoy life here on earth. Are we together? Yeah, me, I'm enjoying my life. And I'm thanking God. I'm not saying that I don't have struggles. They are there. But that is on my focus. That is on my focus. Yes, I need money just like anyone else. But I know in the kingdom there is no lack. So I'm not going to focus on the lack. I focus on that which is truth and continue pursuing that which is truth. That which I'm desiring will come after me. All right? Seek the kingdom first and all will be added to you. Yeah. But when you start worrying, you are not aligning yourself with the truth. Because you are worrying, now you have already restricted the flow of God's grace to come to you. You are desiring and so whatever you actually say we'll read that next time in mark 11. Uh, we are not going to do it now uh, but it's important that we get to restrain our tongues this is a this is a evil by itself if you have read that in the book of james but we are not going to get into that right now i just want us to have that foundational truth that i can have my world my environment i can design how my life will be and my destiny by going by this truth. Are we together? Yeah. So, because of time, I wanted us to read the book of Daniel. So that we, but can we do that next week on Tuesday? Yeah, so that we see it practically in the book of Daniel about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You can go and read that. Try and see these truths. Don't just read through. Right? read seeking the uh, the help of the holy spirit because you have the holy spirit in you so that he can he can actually show you what is this truth that is here that i need to know ask for that help
Because the truth is already there. So that we can also walk in the same kind of light. That I don't have to just be speaking things negatively and not expecting uh, yeah, what I have already spoke, uh, spoken to be a reality in my life. Praise the Lord, church. Uh, wow. Uh, I think I'm going to end there. Uh, yeah, so that uh, you first go and digest that. Reflect on Mark 4. Read that parable again. Uh, and again. And again. And decide what kind of soil do you want to be or to have in your own heart. It's you to choose. We are not being forced to do it. It is our responsibility to choose. Even for you who is watching us. My desire and my prayer is that you have been following uh, th this teaching and that you're going to desire to have these truths working in your life in everything that you do let's not have a spiritual life and that which is uh, in the natural no we are supposed to be led by the spirit of god so that we live the supernatural life and we enjoy the kingdom life that jesus came to give us and it has already been done but majority of us are not living that kind of life it's not because uh, the challenges will go away. Don't be cheated by anyone. You'll be persecuted as, even as a believer. But it's still okay. you still continue growing and you'll be strengthened. And even that which is coming to you in a negative way, intending now to come and finish you, God will change it and turn it to be for, for good. All right? If we can have this kind of mentality, this attitude in our everyday walk of life, so many things as we struggle with in this life, we will not be struggling with them. I hope you are getting my point. I hope you are seeing this. Because this is the truth. This is the life that God designed for us to live. And that's why he has given us this manual. That majority of us even avoid reading. Or we just read through. Or read just one scripture. I'm not saying that it is wrong. Because that is still the truth that you are also reading. But are you able now to interpret it in the light of the new covenant we have we have a better covenant with better promises are we together it's not like the times of the old all that has been given here is for our benefit and me i have purpose and i decided i'll be digging into this word every day every day so that i get to see all these promises that have been given here can i leave them now yes when we go into heaven when we go to heaven we won't need these promises because there will be no enemy to overcome. Yeah. <laughs> he will already be defeated. We need this power now, here. Yeah? Not in heaven. We can have the heaven now, here. Alright? We have been given all these weapons for us to overcome the enemy. Because he's already a defeated foe. But we are fighting him like he's still there. Like he's still so powerful. Yet he is defeated. He has nothing. He's a toothless dog or a toothless lion. Yeah? All right, evangelist. Let me end there. Otherwise, I will continue with the next one. Yeah. I speak God's favor upon you, and my prayer, and I will never stop praying and trusting God for you to continue believing in God's word and trusting. And even as we are praying, and I know you have heard me say this many times, that prayer will not just work because it's, we are praying. We have to have the prayer of faith and faith will not come unless we are hearing god's word so prayer will not make faith work are you together yeah but faith will make prayer work <laughs> say that again say that again <laughs> say that again yeah i'm saying this that prayer will not make faith, faith work. work all right because we can pray, 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 pray. But if you are praying a prayer that has no faith, we pray beyond boundaries. Yes, yeah. We can prayer is good. Yes, it is because we are allowing actually God now to come and intervene in our situation. But it has to be a prayer of faith. Yeah. Yes. Because prayer will not make faith work. Faith work. Yeah. But faith. Yeah. Will make prayer work. That's why in our vision we say by the power of. Prayer. Yeah, through yes. the working of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. People of 
faith, faith yes. who survive and so faith yeah. is part of yeah, yeah. this yes. vision yeah but this faith it doesn't just drop on us because yes, it is it there drops all the faith that we need is in the in, in the, the word. word and it only comes how by hearing and hearing by the word, word. yeah because okay. faith if you are listening to negative news and that's where your focus is faith is still coming but uh, yes faith is still coming ne- negative faith yes but it's working against you because yeah, in fact actually it develops fear. fear instead of you having the power of the word working in you and you're focusing on the negatives that are actually around us Reasoning because there are the so right many thing. of us then what will grow in you because that's what you're depositing in your heart the kingdom that is within you right your spirit it doesn't matter whatever you sow the seed has the dominion to demand of that kingdom to bring forth that which is in self. Yes, please, please yeah. say that again. Yeah. Pole, pole. Yeah. Whatever you sow. Yeah. Whatever you are sowing. The soil uh, has that seed domi- that yes, yeah. the seed. Uh, that seed has the dominion. The dominion power. Yeah. It's Kutamala. the one that demands the heart then to bring the forth yes. what is in that seed. So what so is the heart will not yeah, yeah. what is, is the seed more that important yeah. is what we are planting. Yes, what you are yes. sowing every single day what is it that you're speaking can i request yeah. one thing yes can you put the microphone down yeah. lift your hearts <laughs> before god we want to bless pray for you we want to bless you in jesus mighty name yeah open that let us all pray for this gentleman for a minute yes you forgot you had not we thank you jesus we then you jesus we thank you jesus we thank you heavenly father for this gift we thank you for this gift you have given to the prayers beyond boundaries ministries for this gift you have given to the world this gift you have given to the church this give, gift you have given to me and my family, we thank you. For the insight and the revelation in his life, we thank you. For the battles you have fought for him to be what he is today, we thank you. For his future that is hidden in you, Jehovah, we thank you. Lord, I I am privileged to be the wife of this gentleman. So I know him. I know his challenges. I know what he wants right now. I know what he's presenting to you in prayer. I know I am privileged to be the wife. And in the name of Jesus, together with these dear ones, Father in heaven, we pray in unity. And we declare an answer to your requests. An answer to your requests in the name of Jesus. This day, 6th of October, the year 2020, receive the answer to your requests in Jesus' name. It is done. It can never be otherwise. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. We are going to wind up. Mary John, thank you so much. You are getting very excited and you said, wow, I can't change the whole world, but I can change the world I am in. Mary Johnson is very excited there. I cannot change the whole world, but I can change the world I am in. Grace favor and live happily ever after when you change the world you are in because of the state we lived in before knowing christ because of how we lived before knowing christ now that we are in a new creation now that we are everything is made new we must program ourselves with god's word and i cannot continue Ladies and gentlemen, those who are following us from different parts of the world, and those of us who are privileged to be here live with so many questions, but our allow us not to answer them today. We can postpone that and still answer them. If you ever want to be reminded of what was taught today, 
if you ever want to be reminded even of the main points, see what Pastor Amos was putting across. When you see the prayers beyond Bowdery's ministries commented is, it is Pastor Amos putting across all the big and small points to the glory of God. If you interpret the scripture in a wrong way, you are putting yourself in bondage. Eat right, live right. Eat wrong, live wrong. Let us eat this word. Father in heaven, I thank you and we thank you for the precious privilege of hearing your word, being taught your word, being transformed by your word. You are reminding us that we are more privileged than millions of people who don't desire your word under the face of the earth. You are reminding me that our lives are totally transformed. You turn in our lives as compared to the world that millions of people are living their own world without the word of God. You are reminding me that we are going very far because we are getting strong daily. As compared to millions of people under the face of the earth who don't hear and understand your word. It is such a precious privilege. We are so grateful. We are so grateful that we are elevated. We are so grateful that we are in another level. We are so grateful, Lord, for the gift of your word. It is everything to us. And by this word I declare and decree. Again, open doors to all of you who came in today. Open doors to all of you who followed in today. Open doors to those who follow in the future. Father, have your way. May by this word, Kenya be peaceful. May by this word, our counties be peaceful. May by this word, the leadership of this nation be at peace and with the wisdom of God. May by this word, prayers beyond boundaries ministries be transformed. May by this word, things change in our personal lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are so precious and that's why you are following. But I am telling you, unless you allow the spirit of the Lord to dwell richly in you, you cannot understand the word. And so I humbly stand here as a mother in the, ha mother in the house to request if you are there and you are struggling understanding the word or you struggle even to know it, it is because you need a shift, a lifting, faith lifting. And this comes when you say, Lord, save me. Jesus, I receive you. You are there. It is you that I'm talking to. And you know and you know. The word cannot, the, the soil by which the seed has been planted is wanting. And you desire to grow deep in God and soar high in him. This is the day that the Lord has made. And for you to rejoice with us and be glad in it, receive the salvation of Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Just say that. I have decided, oh yes, to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. I have decided, oh yes, to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. It is you I'm talking to. Lift your heart to God. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. All that I do and I have done. The cross before me. The cross of Jesus. My victory. My salvation. My redemption. The world behind me. And the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. 
No turning back. Lift your heart to God. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive your salvation today. I receive the forgiveness of sins. I receive newness. I welcome your spirit to be able to understand you and your kingdom. Today, I am a new creature. The past is gone. The new has come. I am in your kingdom. Lead and guide me. I surrender all to you. Amen. With that confession, you've been translated into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God's dear son. And now the spirit of God is already in you. You'll be able, as you continue reading the word, to understand. Because the spirit searches all things, we've been told. And there is there in the book of Romans chapter number three, searches all things. And because the spirit searches all th things, your, your understanding of the word will be, will be transformed, will be packaged by the spirit. And your heart, your life changes from this minute. You are no longer that one. You are a new creature. In the name of Jesus, I cover you by the precious blood of Jesus. I declare no evil fashioned against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. I soak you in the blood of Jesus and I declare from this day the heart of God upon you. God will never let you go. And to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, lift your hearts. You are so special in the eyes of God. You are so special, you came to represent a big, huge organization called Prayers Beyond Boundaries Ministries. Should there be any need within you, I call upon the heavens, the God Almighty who answers by fire. Right now, I call upon his power right now. The most high God, the power as it was in Mount Carmel. When during the contest, God showed up for Elijah. That the world may know there is a God in Israel. There was a God who answers. I call upon this God right now to answer every desire in you. To answer every dream in you. And I declare at an elevation of favor as you walk out in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The same to you, dear ones. Those who believe in this God and you are following us an elevation of the favor and the masses of God in Jesus' mighty name. It was an amazing moment being the first of a Tuesday to be back to church 6 to exactly 8 p.m. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face, face shine upon you and be gracious to you in Jesus' name. If you received salvation, kindly communicate Call the numbers that are scrolling down there, 0758, 100, 300. I know you are doing, there are so many people who are already re waiting for that to answer and to pray with you. Can you do that? We want to encourage you. We want to be there for you. A reminder, this is a pure English service where we are taught the word of God on Tuesday. It is beyond boundaries. Join us next Tuesday from uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. PM, same place, same great organization and ministry, same great servants of God, same great people with us here, and the same church to the glory of God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you. Charity Karaoke, our mama, thank you so much. Thank you for all those who are praying for us as we are continuing. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your masses. We call you blessed and we call you favored. Once again, Coming Friday at 7.30, join me live international forum as we pray for nations and encourage one another. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we say, the church service continues 9 to 10.30. is prayers, 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 and faith, faith, faith. 10.30 to 12.30, our service. God bless you and keep you. We give our offering when we come together in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I call the offerings blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah.
Amazing grace, how sweet that sound that saved a wretch like me.